Whether you're planning to retire or have already retired, it's useful to know if you're on track to achieve your goals. So in this video, we'll look at how to set your goals, quantify them, and then build a portfolio that's likely to get you there, but also how to ensure that you stay on track once you have a plan in place. And a good starting point is to have clear goals. I speak to lots of people about investment and a lot of them don't have clear goals. But I'd say the most common goal is, I just don't want to run out of money before I die. I don't want to be dependent on my kids for an income. Another common one is I want to leave as much money for my children as possible. Although I do get some people that say, screw the kids, I'm just going to spend it all. Another strangely common one for people I speak to is they're sailors. They want to sail around the world, they want to save up for a boat, and their whole life is geared towards that goal. And occasionally I speak to people who want to retire early, so this is the fire movement. But whatever your goal, it's good to have a good idea of where you want to be headed in life and then the financial plumbing that needs to exist to enable that lifestyle. But then once you've got that goal, you have to turn it into numbers. And there's a nice quote here from a physicist, Lord Kelvin. When you can measure what you're speaking about and express it in numbers, you know something about it. But when you cannot measure it, when you can't express it in numbers, your knowledge is of a meagre and unsatisfactory kind. A more pithy way of putting that might be to say, if you can measure it, you can understand it and control it. And I think this applies to investment as well. If you don't have any plan at all, if you're just throwing money into the market, then what's the point? It's not really geared towards any kind of goal and it's probably a waste of time. Now, an incredibly simple way to approach this is to say, this is the income I want in retirement. How big a pot of investment do I need in order to generate that income? And a really simple rule of thumb is the 4% rule, where you simply multiply by 25. So let's say that you want an income of £40,000 a year. Then you'd multiply by 25 and you come up with a million. Where does the 25 come from? It's just dividing by 4%. And where does the 4% come from? Well, if the return of global stocks is around 5% real, that's above inflation, then taking out 4% is going to be sustainable, or at least the pot will last a long time with an average return of 5%. So it's really about harvesting your portfolio in a sustainable way without the money running out. If you want something more elaborate, you can create a spreadsheet with one row per year of your life, all the way up to 100, say, and maybe for your partner as well. And then you'd say, well, my rough expenditure is going to be so much per year. Maybe you also want to factor in other sources of income. So if you've got buy-to-let properties, they generate an income. Don't forget to inflation adjust future cash flows because inflation increases your living costs. And then for your investments, look at those long-term averages. So you might expect 9% growth for your stocks on average and about 5% growth for your bonds. Usually what it looks like, your total size of investment pot, is something like a shark fin. So you've got your accumulation phase, your decumulation phase, and the goal is to build up enough during the accumulation phase that it lasts your entire retirement until you pass away. Now, if you're one of our premium website members, you've got access to a set of tools which allow you to simulate what could happen as you build up your portfolio and as you draw it down using something called Monte Carlo simulation. But all this really does is simulate multiple possible futures based on the uncertainty built into asset classes. So what you end up with is a probability of reaching your goals. So the tools for this particular task are in our savings and retirement tracker. So let's say you're going to build up a pot of £600,000. The 4% rule would tell you that that would generate an income of about £24,000 a year. So with this tracker, what you can do is say how long you've got to get to retirement. So let's say it's 20 years. Let's say your initial capital is £100,000. Inflation is 2.8%. Savings growth rate, the rate at which you can grow the amount you're putting aside. Let's say that's in line with inflation, so 2.8%. And let's say we max out our ISA, so 20000 a year. And the investment return we're going to get is roughly what we get for equities, which is about 9% nominal growth. And the volatility of equity would be about 14% for a global fund. Now, our target amount, the important thing, is 600,000 that you can see here at the bottom. So let's rerun the simulation. 
So this is what the results look like. Each of these wiggly lines is one potential future and it simulates 200 of those. You can specify how many simulations here. But the median case, the typical case, is the red line in the center here. And you can see that in 92% of the simulations, we reached our 600,000 pound target. And in some very lucky simulations, we actually built up considerably more, 2 million in some cases, or even more. Now you can't ever absolutely guarantee that you'll reach a target because stocks are random. Sometimes you can just be unlucky with the sequence of returns you get. But what this allows you to do is to work out the probability of reaching a certain target given the uncertainty in stocks. There's also a tool which allows you once you're in retirement to work out how likely it is that your pot will last. So this is the drawdown forecast tool. So let's say we're going to have a 30 year retirement. We live from say 60 to 90. Inflation is going to be 2.8% and the income growth rate, let's set that equal to inflation because we want our income to match inflation. Let's assume we want an annual income on top of our state pension of 30,000 pounds. And we've got our initial capital invested, which is 600,000. Let's stick with an investment return of 9% and a volatility of 14%, and we'll do 200 simulations again. Now what you're trying to avoid is ruin, and this is when the money runs out before you die. So these are these paths that lead down to zero. We'll talk later about how you can avoid that, but the median case here is that the money lasts more than 30 years, i.e. longer than we're expecting to live. But the money didn't run out in 85.5% of the simulations. So personally, I'd like a little bit more certainty than that, that my money's not going to run out. So perhaps I want to reduce my income, maybe to 25,000 a year. So we'll rerun the simulations. And now we can see that the money didn't run out in 95% of the simulations. And I'd probably be happy with that probability. So let's say that we've got some goal. We know when we're going to retire, say, and we know roughly how much we're going to need. There's still a question about how much you put into stocks, into bonds, what the asset allocation should be to reach those goals. So I'll show you a simple approach which many people use to try and come up with that asset allocation. Now, when it comes to the portfolio, when I'm talking about a goal, what I mean is a financial goal. So that means that you'll need this much cash to achieve your lifestyle at this point in time. And ideally you'd have that broken down year by year. But another approach is to use buckets. So instead of using year by year forecasts, you just break it down into kind of short term, medium term and long term goals. Now a short term goal, you've only got a say five year horizon for that. Then you don't want to put your investments into something crashy like stocks. So there you'd invest in a safe bucket. So that could be, for example, money market funds, or it could be single gilts, or it could be short duration government bond funds. But really anything which isn't crashy, and you'll give up some return as a result of it being safe. Then maybe you've got an intermediate bucket, which is between five and 10 years. And again, these periods aren't set in stone. You can adjust those as well. But for that kind of period of investing, you probably want a more even split between safe stuff and risky stuff. And by risky stuff, I'm talking about global stocks, because what you're trying to do now is dial up the return. You can weather a little bit more volatility. You can wait until things recover if there is a crash. So you can dial up the risk a bit. Still not maybe full whack, but a bit. So for this intermediate horizon, maybe you want an even split between risky and safe. And then if we look at the 10 year plus money, which you're not going to need for more than a decade, for that, the vast majority, I think, should be in stocks because there you're going to get higher returns and you can ride out the volatility quite easily. It's very, very unusual to have a 10 year period when stocks don't have a positive return. And that's for global stocks. So how can we use this in practice? How can we turn this into numbers? So let's go back to that total pot size of 600,000 pounds. And let's say I've worked out that roughly I'm going to have cash requirements of 5,000 pounds over the next zero to five years. Well, that means I'm going to set aside £5,000 into my safe bucket. And then for the five year to 10 year range, I'm going to have another £20,000 requirement. So for that, I'd split it between £10,000 in safe, £10,000 in risky, say, if we've decided for an even risky safe split for that intermediate time period. And then for money I'm not going to need for more than 10 years, I put almost everything into risky. 
So that would be, say, the remaining 575,000. Now, this is just for the purpose of illustration. Don't take these numbers as meaning anything. You'd work out your cash requirements over different periods of time and fill in the blanks appropriately. But what this has allowed us to do is to work out how much to put into safe investments, how much into risky. The total in safe is 15,000, the total in risky 585,000. And this is just one approach. You could be much more nuanced about it and you could actually change it over time as circumstances change and your cash requirements change. Well, now what we've got is a plan. We've turned it into numbers and we've got a projection roughly of whether we're on that track because we can create a spreadsheet and see for this year, this is roughly how much I need in order to get to where I want to be. But how can we stay on track if we have to live with what markets throw at us? It's never a simple, smooth ride. We get market crashes, market rallies, and that really complicates things. So you have to be flexible in your planning to accommodate that uncertainty. So during the accumulation phase, if you know roughly the profile of your investments, so here it would be this red line, which is the median size of our investments over time. If we get to year 10 and we're not anywhere near where we'd expect to be, which is around 400,000 or maybe 500,000 pounds, then we'd know that we'd need to start saving more. We'd be below our path. And of course, if we're well above that at say 600,000, then maybe we could even spend a bit of money. Although to be extra cautious, it's usually best to have an excess. Now during drawdown, what we want to avoid are these catastrophic outcomes where essentially we're ruined. We get a sequence of bad returns. We still have to sell things in order to live because we're retired and we end up with no money in our pot. So how can we avoid those outcomes? Now there are certain requirements. What we do want is we want our income to keep up with inflation. Otherwise we become poorer in real terms and our standard of living will start to fall. What also kind of makes sense is that we should be able to take more money out of our pot if we have a bumper year of returns. So there should be some kind of linkage between the size of our pot, our investments, and the amount which we're withdrawing every year. If the size of the pot shrinks, if there's a crash, then that means we probably have to cut back our expenditure, for example. And that means that the pot will last longer. So a really naive way of doing that would be to say, Every year, I'll inflation adjust my withdrawal. So if I took out £20,000 last year, I'll take out £20,000 plus the rate of inflation over the last year. And that way, we'll gradually accumulate greater income over time. And of course, we'd also need to add how much the size of our investments grew and shrank over the course of the year. So a really naive way of doing this would be to add our rate of return for our investments over the last year and the rate of inflation. The drawback with that approach is that if you look at the returns of a global equity fund like the FTSE All Share, it's extremely volatile. From year to year, it can vary quite easily by 20%. In fact, that's the average annual movement for a global index. And most of us would not want to live with an income which varies by 20% per year. So if we just zoom in on the area in the yellow box, and consider what our income would be over that period if we didn't have some kind of smoothing. This is what it looks like. You just get huge volatility from year to year. And after 2008, when we got a 40%-ish fall in stocks globally, you can see that our income also fell by 43%. So this naive way of increasing the size of our withdrawals by the investment growth plus the inflation rate is not going to work very well. We'd end up with a really volatile income. Of course, some years would be bumper years. For example, the year after that big fall, stocks rose by 30%. But that still didn't quite get us back to where we started, which is an income of about 24 or 26,000 a year. So what people sometimes do is have spending rules, or sometimes these are called guardrails. And this is one of the simplest rules I know. It's called the Vanguard Dynamic Spending Strategy. Notice how these withdrawals don't have those crazy falls and rises. Gradually, the size of the withdrawals is increasing over time, although notice that the year of that crash, there's no growth in the size of our withdrawal at all. And the way this works is that you look at investment growth and inflation, you always inflation adjust your withdrawal. However, 
you cap and floor the amount of the investment growth. So the biggest contribution that your investment returns can make in any given year is 5%. Any growth larger than that simply goes into the savings and it stays there. And that covers the years when markets crash. So for example, this year, when it would have gone up by say 30%, instead it only goes up by 9%. And money's been set aside for the future. And following 2008, when the withdrawal would have fallen by 43%, instead it only fell by 0%. It didn't fall at all. And that's because of the flaw on our withdrawal changes from year to year. So this rule is quite simple. You just take the rate of inflation over the last year and whatever the return on your pot is, your savings, you cap that between minus 2.5 and 5% and add it to inflation. And that produces a much more smooth profile for your withdrawals and an income which is much more stable and much easier to live with. So these guardrails effectively ensure that you don't deplete the pot too quickly and also that you get a fairly smooth income over the course of your retirement. Now they can't perform magic. If you haven't got enough money saved, then you're just going to have a very small income in retirement. But they do help you by ensuring that those catastrophic outcomes are much less likely to occur. So in summary then, I think it's really important to have a plan to turn it into numbers. Even if they're not exactly correct, it'll give you some idea of what you're going to need to have the lifestyle that you want. And then once you've got the plan, you can see whether you're on track. And you can use the tools like the ones I've just shown you, the Monte Carlo tools, or even just a spreadsheet to see whether you're on track and whether you're going to achieve the goals you really want. Now, if you do want to find out more about our membership, just go to our website, pensioncraft.com, and there'll also be a link to that in the description below. And as always, thank you for listening.